Welcome back to another season of College Football M Vlog. I am TJ Cofield and I will be joined by Chris Cox in a few minutes. And we will be your hosts for this year's College Football M Vlog. Hope you've had a great off season. I know I have and I'm very excited uh, to get started with this new season. So let's go ahead and get into Contender and Pretender. Our first contender for the 2012 season is Mr. Monte, no, wait, that's Monte Ball, running back from Wisconsin. In 2011, Monte Ball had over 2,000 all-purpose yards, 39 touchdowns rushing and receiving, and come back, comes back behind a great offensive line and gets another decent quarterback in transfer, Danny O'Brien from Maryland up there at Wisconsin. Even though all the preseason Heisman hype is going towards Matt Barkley at USC, I've got to point everybody's attention back to Monte Ball. He's got a good chance of breaking records in his season in his senior season, and I think he's going to have incredible, incredible senior season, and I think he's going to be my number one Heisman pick for right now. Now, my first pretender for 2012. There's a lot of uh, negative attention focused on Notre Dame because a lot of people say that Notre Dame is getting too much hype, uh, too much attention for a team that hasn't really been in the national contender picture uh, for quite some time. I disagree. There's a team that is getting even more than that that I don't feel has earned it yet, and that's Florida State. Florida State is ranked number seven preseason, and I have no doubt that Florida State will be a pretty good team. Last year, Florida State finished third in the ACC Atlantic Division. They finished 104th in the NCAA in rushing yards. And if there's any team that I feel is being given too much attention right now, it is the Florida State Seminoles, and so they are my pretender for the first in vlog of 2012. Okay, everybody, here's three games to watch for this week. First, we're going to start in one of the Chick-fil-A kickoff games, Tennessee versus North Carolina State. Now, maybe a week or two ago, I would have said that this is probably an easy win for the Volunteers, a good way to start off the campaign to, well, help Derek Dooley keep his job. But now, with the departure of Derek Rogers, very talented receiver, uh, and the difficulties that Tyler Bray has been ha having with, well, his behavior. Uh, there's a lot of off-field distractions for a team that needs to put the distractions away and get back on track, and that being Tennessee. And they've got a tough test in an NC State team that really came on strong at the end of the year last year. Uh, so I would say keep your eye on this game. I'm going to go with the upset here and pick the Wolfpack to upend the Volunteers and uh, really heat up the seat under Derek Dooley. Now, we'll go to East Lansing for our next matchup. Number 24, Boise State, paying a visit to Mark D'Antonio's number 13, Michigan State. Now, if you've watched the in-vlog before, you know that I am a big fan of Mark D'Antonio. And he has got a very tough task in front of him. Now, he's got a home opener with a ranked team that his team can beat to begin with. And it's really a pretty good way to start your season. You've got a great opportunity to move up in the polls. But Mark D'Antonio is going to have to contend with Chris Peterson's Boise State Broncos. However, I think Michigan State has enough in place uh, to put away the Broncos who are really going to be hurting with the departure from Kellen Moore. So I look for Michigan State to win in a high-scoring game. Now, the big game for this week. Number 8 Michigan versus number 2 Alabama in Dallas, Texas in Jerry World. I just like Alabama too much in this one. They've got too much in place. They've got a good solid quarterback. They've got the best offensive and defensive lines probably in the country. And I don't think quarterback Denard Robinson and the Michigan Wolverines are going to have enough to counter that. I think I look for Alabama to win in a fairly low-scoring game. Hi, I'm Chris Cox, and this year we're going to be doing a new segment called Ask TJ, in which you have the opportunity to ask TJ your question about college football, and I'm going to kick it off for this first week that we have here. Knowing that TJ is a big fan of both college football and comic books, I just wanted to ask TJ, can you do a conference breakdown using the characters from the Avengers? You're in luck. I think I'm up to it. Let's start with Captain America. Do you remember the scene where a policeman walks up to Captain America and says, Why should I listen to you? And Captain America doesn't say anything. He just simply swats away one villain and another, and he bashes several others, and without saying, the cop knows that he needs to listen to the guy with the shield. 
Well, Captain America is the SEC. You can complain about why the SEC really runs things among the conferences, and then they win a national championship, and another national championship, and another national championship, on and on and on and on. So that's why they're in charge. Let's go to the Pac-12. Let's see. Lots of offense, a lot of swagger, but maybe not a lot of depth. Well, if that's not Tony Stark's Iron Man, I don't know what else. All right, Big Ten. Old-fashioned, really likes to hammer you. Maybe better with a dash of humility. Well, I've just described the plot of Thor and also his role in the Avengers. Now, the Big East. You know, you think the Big East is just harmless. You think West Virginia is going to go quietly into the night in the 2012 Orange Bowl, and then, oh my gosh, they grow into a green monster scoring 70 points on the ACC champion. Well, they're the Hulk. All right, and the ACC. Okay, the ACC is Hawkeye. They've got a shot, certainly, but it's definitely a distant one. And the Big 12. Well, the Big 12 is Black Widow, because, uh, you know, Black Widow in the movie, she's always in the thick of things, but you're always kind of wondering what she's doing there, and you're always kind of thinking as she's shooting handguns among, you know, aliens with lasers and, you know, the Iron Man, you know, shooting missiles and the Hulk smashing things. You're like, what are those little pistols going to do? And I kind of wonder that with the Big 12. You know, you've got Oklahoma, you've got Texas, but in a couple years when all these teams start going on to other conferences, just as some of your other members have done, well, what are you going to do? And so that's what I have. Now, for our Hometown Heroes segment, we'll look at what Carolina and Clemson both face in their opening weekends. South Carolina will start out the college football season traveling to Nashville to take on James Franklin's Vanderbilt Commodores. Now, this isn't the Vanderbilt Commodores that your grandfather knew that were a little more than a bye game in the SEC schedule. This is a tough bunch led by quarterback Jordan Rodgers, the younger brother of, yes, Aaron Rodgers, Mr. Discount Double Check. So Vanderbilt's going to be a tough team, but this South Carolina team has a lot going for it. It has an incredible defense led by Lorenzo Ward, new defensive coordinator who really proved what he had at last year's Capital One Bowl. It has a solid quarterback in Connor Shaw, and it has returning to it its star running back Marcus Lattimore. I think between its pass rush and its ability to run the football, I think South Carolina will have just a little too much for a very pumped up Vanderbilt team, and I think they're going to win by a narrow margin, but they will win. Now, for Clemson. Some may say that the, the suspension of Sammy Watkins is just too much for Clemson to overcome to take on a team like Auburn. But you have to consider what Auburn is lacking. Auburn is really lacking an offensive identity. They're still trying to figure out who their quarterback is. They've lost running back Michael Dyer to transfer. They've lost their maybe the best coach on their staff beside Chiswick in Gus Malzahn, their offensive coordinator. There's a lot that we just don't know about Auburn. And even without star Sammy Watkins, maybe the most explosive player in the country, I just think that Clemson has too much between Taj Boyd at quarterback and Andre Ellington at running back. I think they have too much for Auburn to withstand, and I think Clemson's going to win in kind of a sloppy game in the Georgia Dome. I'll be taking over the Furman Paladins portion of Hometown Heroes this year, and Furman is opening up the season by heading down to Birmingham, Alabama to take on the Sanford Bulldogs in a Southern Conference opener. Furman is a bit of an enigma heading into the season. They finished last year 6-5, and five, although they defeated two top five opponents and gave Florida a really big scare in their season finale last year. But one of the catalysts of that season, quarterback Chris Forcier, graduated. And so, it's going to fall on the shoulders of quarterback Dakota Derrick to step into those shoes and deliver. Now, Fortunately for him, he gets to hand it off to an all-so-con tailback by the name of Jerodis Williams, and I expect to see him run it a lot this week. On the defensive end of the ball, look for preseason All-American Mitch McGrath uh, to hopefully be a difference maker and an X-factor for the Furman defense, which is returning a pretty strong contingent from last year. If Derek can uh, play the game that he needs to play, uh, I feel like Furman might be able to pull off the win and start the season off on a very strong note. That will do it for our first week of the Amalgam Ball College Football Report. Like I said, we have some kinks that we're going to need to work out, but uh, we're glad to be back, and uh, we will see you next week. Thanks for joining us.